past chairman of our working group who will present uh, uh, interesting results from the fast MI registry that uh, Uh, thank you very much, uh, Christian. Uh, the ESC this year has put uh, much emphasis on the role of registries in the better understanding that we may have of our patients and their diseases. What I would like to present to you today are results from the first MI registry in France. This is a nationwide uh, French survey uh, which was carried out in patients admitted to ICUs for an acute myocardial infarction, be it a, an ST elevation myocardial infarction or a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, over a period of uh, one month at the end of 2005. The patients had to have had their symptom onset uh, no more than two days uh, prior to admission. In all, we had 3,670 patients included in this uh, registry, of whom uh, few, uh, slightly fewer than uh, 3,300 were discharged alive and had a detailed discharge prescription available. Uh, of those patients, about half, 49%, received what we called optimal medical therapy, that is all uh, recommended classes of medications, that is antiplatelet agents, statins, beta blockers, and either ACE inhibitors or ARBs. We had a very uh, high level of follow-up with 99% uh, follow-up data at one year and 95% at three years, and I would like to present to you results today of the uh, three-year follow-up, first of all, uh, on the role of anti-anginal medications prescribed at discharge uh, beyond uh, beta blocker treatment. If you look here at the proportion of patients, 39% of the patients received any type of anti-anginal medication other than beta blockers, and you see here that those patients who um, received anti-anginal medications beyond beta blockers uh, were at a higher risk than the uh, patients who did not receive such anti-anginal medications. And their survival was uh, less good at three years. That was in univariate analysis, that is the crude data. However, when we adjusted extensively, we did really extensive adjustments to the uh, baseline characteristics of the patients, to the treatments they received before the index MI, and with the uh, procedures performed during the hospitalization and the uh, complications during the hospitalization, we found that there was no hazard uh, re related to the uh, use of anti-anginal medications prescribed at discharge. You see here, the adjusted hazard ratio was 0 0.98. Then we looked individually at the different classes of uh, anti-anginal medications, and we found that three classes or three medications were associated with increased mortality, and those were nitrates, nitrates with a 24% increase in mortality, mulcidamine with a 50% increase in mortality, and diltizem, which was associated with a doubling of mortality at three years. These results were significant in usual Cox multivariate analysis, but we then performed what we call propensity score matched analysis. That is to give you an idea what is this type of analysis, you try to define a score of the probability that a given patient will or will not receive a given treatment. For example, here for mulcidamine, you will look at all the baseline characteristics of these patients and you will define a score going from zero to one of getting a treatment with mulcidamine. If you have one, that means you have 100% per 
chance of getting mozidamine. If you have a score of zero, you have zero percent chance. You never have zero, you never have one, but you have between, let's say, 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 score. And once you've uh, calculated this score for each patient, you match a patient who receives actually mulcidamine with a patient or two patients here who uh, d do not receive mulcidamine based on this score. And then you have uh, cohorts of patients who have the same baseline characteristics. And you see here what we found with these propensity score matched cohorts, we still found that there was an increased risk in the patients receiving mulcidamine compared with those who did not receive mulcidamine, but that was not true for the propensity score matched cohorts for nitrates or for diltiazem. So in conclusion, what we found was overall antianginal medications uh, were prescribed in more severe patients. After adjustment for confounding factors, there was no association with three-year mortality for the global use of any type of non-beta blocker antianginal medication. There were differences between antianginal medications, however, with three agents, which were nitrates, mulcidamine, and diltiazem, and they were associated with worse survival in uh, classic multivariate analysis. In propensity score adjusted cohorts, however, uh, only the association between uh, mulcidamine treatment on discharge and mortality uh, persisted. Uh, we really think that this is no great proof of any hazard or benefit of mulcidamine or uh, any of the other antianginal medications. The group of patients receiving mulcidamine was small. It was only 110 uh, patients. There are a lot of possible confounders. We uh, looked at the prescription at discharge, and it may well be that the patients stopped their treatment during the three-year follow-up. Uh, but I think these results should push us to more extensively study the potential benefits or potential harms of antianginal medications in patients with coronary artery disease. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, that you could speculate as to why uh, the drugs might increase the risk. And the second question was, how often is uh, melcidamine, how often is that typically prescribed for patients? Yeah. It, it was prescribed in uh, less than 4% of the patients. That is very unusual. When you have a prescription in such a, a small percentage of patients, it is likely that there are differences between the patients who do receive such a treatment and those who do not that you can't put your finger on, really, even in the multivariate analysis. That is why I think we have to be extremely cautious in the way we present these uh, results. As to the potential mechanism that might explain uh, such uh, a finding, it is a short-acting uh, drug, mulcidamine, which has to be given uh, three times a day. And it is a kind of vasodilator, very similar to nitrates, but it seems that it also has an uh, antiplatelet activity. And what we might speculate, but I insist on the word speculate, is that there might have been a rebound effect in these patients at the end of uh, uh, of the uh, efficacy uh, of the drug at the trough uh, of, the, uh, of the drug concentration in, in the blood. But that, that is purely speculative. Okay. We have to, it's fair to acknowledge, and it has been mentioned by Nicolas, that it is uh, clearly coming from obs an observational study uh, not randomized, it's uh, using a very useful uh, statistical tool, propensity match score, and clearly it's only hypothesis uh, generating uh, data, and this is fair to acknowledge that uh, and to emphasize. Yes, that, that is really a very important comment.
Abração.